Hello YouTube, welcome to this next video in the Land Rover Discovery 2 V8 engine rebuild series. <laughs> In this video I get the block and the heads back from the machine shop. I'm going to assemble those uh, cylinder heads ready for the final assembly of the engine and I'm going to do a check, a check assembly on the bottom end, checking all the clearances, piston fit, rings, rods, blah blah blah, all of it. Let's get into it. I have got the block back. It has been skimmed on this face and skimmed on this face. The steel uh, is now flush with the surface of the aluminium. Is it easier to see on that one? So um, the head gasket and the head will pinch the liner as well as the uh, you know aluminium block. It'll pinch the liner. It's on a shelf at the bottom and it's flush at the top. So I'm happy with that. Got two new surfaces, both heads skimmed, still just about within spec. And they're still in their bags. So tiny bit of die grinding now. I've done most of it already. It's just a little bit to go and uh, an assembly of the heads, cleaning and then assembly. That'll be a real nice milestone having those done. Then clean the crank and then onto the block, man, and it's pretty. We're pretty close to getting that thing together. Very exciting. Well, the heads look absolutely lovely. Really nice. The um, machine shops put a little um, chamfer on the edge of each, each of these bolt holes and uh, chamfered the edge as well. Really uh, spent some time fixing all that up. It's lovely. Very satisfying. Right, I'm in the thick of putting the valves back in now. Valves there. New stem seals. You can see them in blue in the inside the valve spring. And uh, I'm going to carry on doing the rest of these the next six. So I'll try and put the camera in a position where I can do a decent time lapse. We shall see how that goes. Right, you can see here I've used a little socket. You might not be able to see, but I'm holding a little socket over the uh, stem seal to tap it on. So it protects the rubber and it just pushes on the metal. Uh, and then, yeah, using the valve spring compressor tool to get the rest on, get the collets in with a bit of grease. And uh, you can see on the top of that screwdriver set I'm using, you can see the... Um, the brake cleaner evaporating as the time lapse goes on. That's it, folks. One cylinder head done. So that's going to go in the kitchen now, where it's nice and clean. And I'm going to bring the other cylinder head back in and do the same with it. Uh, in the usual way, I got really excited and um, done loads of work and forgot to film it. <laughs> I just get so carried away. So um, I've done a lot of checks on a block. Um, it's back from machining. The two faces are skimmed. I've got to check the, I have checked the piston ring clearance in the pistons, the piston ring clearance in the, the gaps in the bore, the piston clearance in the bores. Uh, I've plastic gauged the crankshaft, uh, checking the um, bearing clearance, di um, diametric clearance, and um, yeah, it all looks great. So I am about to put the crankshaft in. This is it. It's been in, the bearings are in. I had to make a slight adjustment to the thrust bearing. The guys at the machine shop said they, uh, they need to buy the thrust bearings in order to fit because not only are the, um, the journals oversized or undersized on the crankshaft, but also the face which touches the crankshaft for thrust uh, for end float movement, that needed adjusting as well because it fitted the bearing, but when you put the bearing in the, in the block, it forces those two thrust bearings slightly apart and that uh, needs adjusting. So they, they said get some very fine 1200 grit uh, wet and dry and just take a fraction off the bearing and indeed that worked so that's now ready to go so this is it crankshaft in and um, lots of assembly lube put the caps on tighten through the sequence uh, and then i can start doing the same the plastic gauge check with the uh, with the con rods with the con rods yeah there it goes So the plastic gauge showed no issues. The clearance was within spec points. I can't remember what it was point zero one to point zero four five, I think. So the manual in millimeters. So next is to tighten it down. You can't spin it like this when there's plastic gauge in, of course. So now I'm going to tighten it down and just check it still spins. It's got plenty of lube on the crankshaft in there. Lucas thick uh, assembly oil. Yeah, so I think I'll go time lapsey for assembling this because there's a few things to consider. Not least of which with this end cap, there's these crucifix seals to go in and getting sealant down in the, in the gaps here. So yeah, let's go. So the first four mains go in fairly easily, just to make sure everything's orientated right and tighten them down. Apologies for the camera, they're having a bit of an episode. The last main has the crucifix seal in it, uh, so I've put a little extra sealant on there and then uh, tighten that down. And then I follow the torque sequence from the, from the manual. Uh, it looks like I tightened the mains first, then the side, the cross bolts, and then back to the mains. 
and she's done. That's the crankshaft now fully installed. There's a seal to go in the back, which kind of completes that job really. So they're all torqued uh, down to spec 58 newton meters, and then 68 on the back ones, and these are all to 45. And of course, the question now is does it turn? <laughs> It'd be a bummer if it didn't. Yeah, she's sweet. Turns my hand, just that thick oil slowing me down, that's perfect. That's really good now, that's got such a tight tolerance, it's going to have great oil pressure. It's a sweet mitre. Job done. So I've put one piston in, you can see here. I did. I thought I was videoing the whole thing, but I've been talking to myself. <laughs> so there's oil on the bore, there's oil on the piston, there's assembly lube on the small end, but the big end is dry. I've bolted it up hand tight. And this was the best journal on the crankshaft before it was reground. And I'm going to put a second piston in, number three here, which was the worst journal. It was the one with the most damage. So uh, all of them have been ground on the crankshaft, but I figured those two uh, were the extremes of the starting point. They did a good job on the main, so I'm only going to plastic two of them because uh, they're stretch bolts on the big ends, and I want to reuse them just for this test. I don't want to waste the new stretch bolts on the plastic gauge test. So I'll do these two and then I can put the rest of them in and put the new bolts in and, uh, and talk them up, providing the plastic gauge check is okay. So I right, you can see I've removed the caps again. This is the residue from the plastic gauge. A bit squished out like that. And there's the other one. It doesn't matter that the mill's pulled out, you can still measure it size-wise. So that's the stuff there, plastic gauge. Pull out your little measuring card. I'm going to be working in... That's inches. I'm going to be working in millimetres. There you go. Millimetres. And then you simply offer it up. And yeah, there you go. You offer up the red against your plastic gauge material that's spread out. And it's close to that number there, really. So it's a little bit. So you see the next size down is 0 0.05. This one's 0 0.08. Uh, sorry, 3.8. So. It's a little bit smaller than the 0 0.038, so it's probably 0 0.4, somewhere between 0 0.4 and 0 0.05, sorry, 0.45. This one here is a little bit smaller, it's around 0 0.05 of the clearance. So I can go check that in the manual now. There you go, big end bearings, big end bearing diametrical clearance, 0 0.015 to 0 0.055. So we got 0.0. 0.38 on one of them and 0.045 on the other, so spot on. At this point, I've done all the checks, I'm ready to assemble the engine basically. But there was a defect on the cylinder deck, uh, cylinder block deck that I wasn't happy with. So uh, I took it back, the machine shop was good as gold, and they did uh, resurface it again. So you'll see in the next video, the crank is not in. <laughs> I've got to put it in again. But uh, yeah, so that's all the checks done on the bottom end. I hope you're enjoying this series of videos. Tune in for the next one, where I think will be... I oh know, it's a good video. Tune in for the next one. <laughs> Bye for now, folks.